Have I slipped over to the dark side? We'll continue watching to find out. So today, we're at the Dells of Eau Claire County Park in Eastern Marathon County. I like the Dells of Eau Claire for a couple of reasons. One, it's close to my home of Wausau. And second, it's on the Ice Age National Scenic Trail. We're on the Ice Age Trail. So it's um, always a, a fun time to come out here and uh, put the Ice Age Trail on the air. It's a nice little park. It's got um, a great water feature, uh, the Dells of the Eau Claire River, uh, which was created Oh, uh, when the glaciers uh, melted. Let's kind of get into the reason I'm here, and it's this little thing. Now, as you know, I'm not really much into uh, digital operation. Uh, you know, uh, when I'm doing a Parks on the Air activation, it's usually on phone, and um, it's really not a reason of a lack of wanting to do it. But um, you know, it's, I've had a um, a signal link uh, for many years. I used to use it on my old ICOM HF transceiver worked great uh, but every time I took it out into the field with my FT891 uh, the um, uh, the cat control would always get flaky I always have problems with it so um, never really good results and probably part of it was um, me not using it correctly part of it is the device itself part of it's the FT891 but you know you just get that um, the Venn diagram of failure going on. So <laughs> um, I decided to um, resolve that problem by uh, purchasing a DigiRig. Uh, DigiRig is, I'm going to call this the next generation uh, interface. Uh, a nice little box here, the sucker's tiny, uh, has a USB C port on one end, and then it has uh, two um, eighth inch uh, micro ports on the other, uh, one for serial or uh, control, cat control, C IV control, um, transceiver rig control of some sort, and the next and the other one is for audio, audio out and audio in. Uh, so it's um, a lot of punch in this little package. Um, hook it up, you know, hook it up to your computer, uh, get the appropriate cable for your transceiver, and uh, you should be on the air. Well, at least we're going to test that today. So um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about more about the DigiRig how I set it up for my FT891, and then we're gonna put this park on the air. The DigiRig Mobile is a digital modes interface that combines audio codec, serial cat interface, and push to talk control. What really makes the DigiRig Mobile different, other than its diminutive size, is the ability to communicate with the transceiver in one of three ways, cat, vox, or voice activated, or push to talk via the serial RTS signaling. In most cases, the DigiRig only needs a single USB connection from the computer. Because it's built on an open source platform, the DigiRig is quite flexible and extensible. Perusing the online store, you will see that it can support a wide variety of transceivers, even those without computer control. But today we're going to focus on Yaesu's FT891 and how the DigiRig interfaces with it. The Yaesu is slightly maddening in that it is, has an integrated USB port but this port is only for CAT control. There is no internal sound card in the FT891. Because digital operation is split between the USB and the data ports, using this rig on the uh, digital modes becomes a bit sloppy. The DigiRig overcomes this by using serial RTS signaling to toggle the push to talk button. This means that a single cable can deliver audio and push to talk, and you don't have to deal with configuring CAT controls and getting multiple drivers to work. If you're using another one of Yaesu's portable rigs, like the FT817, 857, or 897, then CAT control is handled through the remote connection on the rig, but the DigiRig still offers unified CAT support through the interface. In purchasing the DigiRig for the FT891, you'll need two items, the DigiRig mobile interface itself and the Yaesu FT8XX cords for the DigiRig mobile. In selecting the DigiRig, order the logic levels or default CAT configuration. This configuration is compatible with CAT and RTS signaling for Yaesu. In connecting the DigiRig to the FT891, first connect the interface to your computer via a USB-C cable. This will automatically install the appropriate driver for the interface. Next, looking at the cables, you'll see that one has a green connector and the other one black. These are color-coded for the audio and the serial connections on the interface. You will only use the black audio cable with the FT891 so you can put the green cable away. 
The audio cable will connect to the data DIN connector on the back of the transceiver. That's the one closest to the USB connection on the rig. Speaking of USB, we will not be connecting the USB cable to the rig and only will control it via the DigiRig mobile interface. Now that the hardware portion of connecting the FT891 to the computer is done, we're going to move on to the software configuration. I'm going to focus on the WSJTX application, but it's just going to be similar for other digital packages. Then opening up WSJT, you'll want to use the port for RTS signaling. Open up file and settings and under the radio make the following changes. Set cat control to none. This will gray out most of the form. Then push to talk method, select RTS and also the port your digirig is connected to. In my case it's port 6. Finally test things by pressing the test push to talk button. This should cycle the transmit on your FT891. Be sure you're connected to an antenna or dummy load. If it works you're set otherwise you probably selected the wrong port and need to make an adjustment in Yesu's internal menu. Next, go to the audio and make sure the DigiRig's input and output are selected and not the computer's internal microphone and speaker. Press OK and you should start seeing stuff on the waterfall. Before finishing with WSJT, I'm just going to quickly shift over to the FT891 and talk about the settings that should be adjusted for data operation. Since I like to use my rig for both phone and digital, I chose to use the data mode for FT8. But in doing so, there's a few settings that you're going to need to tweak. The goal in these settings are to get the widest amount of bandwidth and signal from the transceiver into the computer so that WSJT can process the entire passband. So we're going to widen things as much as possible. All of the data mode settings are in section 8. So uh, first off, data mode 8-1, we should be set to others. 8-3, other DISP, 1500. 8-4, other shift, 1500. Now these are the important ones. Data low cut frequency, set it as low as you can, 300. And data high cut frequency, set it as high as you can, 2800. Uh, data in select, the rear, data push to talk select DAKY. This is important. If your FT891 isn't cycling when you press the uh, push to talk test, uh, make sure that your data push to talk select is set to DAKY. Data out level, a 50. Uh, data BFO should be set to USB or upper side band. Uh, digital modes are always upper side band on the HF bands. And then finally, we're going to set the uh, power output for our, our data modes. 16-3 uh, is HF power. That controls uh, power output for CW and digital. And that should be set to whatever you wish. I usually set it to either 20 or 30 watts. Finally, after setting the computer and the transceiver, we should be ready to do some FT8. When I switch to data mode and tune to the FT8 frequency, things sound really narrow. The FT891 defaults to 500 hertz in the data pass band, so I'll need to adjust the width. That's on the front panel under the WDH setting. Uh, widen it as far as it goes. You'll also want to turn off noise reduction, the processor, and AGC or automatic game control. The goal is to get the widest, most unaltered audio into the computer for processing. Doing that, you'll see on the WSJP screen that the audio is very distorted. Turn down the RF gain, uh, that's the inner ring on the volume knob, until the audio levels are in the green, uh, usually around 30 or 40 dB or so. Next, we'll need to adjust our output level so that our transmitted audio isn't clipped or overmodulated. First, set the panel meter on your FT891 to ALC or auto limit control. The goal is to keep the ALC graph to the far left as possible. Either hook to an antenna or a dummy load, press the tune button on WSJT and adjust the power slider that's on the right hand of the screen until the ALC is barely moving. This will give you a clean output signal. And that's it. Well, that's really the bare minimum in configuring the DigiRig Mobile and FT891 for FT8 operation. There's some more things you can do, and I've tagged a couple other videos in the description that really a deep dive into this, these settings, but this will get you on the air. So let's jump back into the park and make some contacts. 
we were on the Ice Age Trail. If you like this video and want to see more like it, hit like and subscribe. That's my indicator to produce more of this type of content. Thank you for your support. The Dells of the Eau Claire River was created when the glaciers uh, melted. Uh, these rocks here in the Dells are uh, some of the oldest uh, rocks on Earth, uh, over a billion years old. And uh, 13,000 years ago, as, as the glaciers receded and they melted, a large quantity of meltwater uh, flowed through this area and uh, carved the Dells, the unique water feature that we see today. It's a beautiful day out here at the Dells of Eau Claire County Park on the Ice Age National Scenic Trail. And again, uh, we're using the uh, window screen ground plane uh, counterpoise for the uh, uh, for the quarter wave vertical antenna. I've been really pleased on how this uh, window screen's really worked as a ground plane uh, for the uh, the vertical antenna. It's uh, it's for the last few activations. It's kind of been my go-to, and it's proven itself over and over again. So if you're looking for a, an option for um, good good performance in a very limited space, hey, think of that. I think of using something like a screen instead of radio wires. Uh, we also used the uh, DigiRig. This uh, activation was totally on FT8. Uh, 42 contacts on the uh, 20 meter bands, all on FT8 with the DigiRig. I'm really pleased with how this thing worked. Um, like I said, I've, I've always kind of shied away from digital operation because the signal link just never worked right uh, with um, the combination of the cat control and the uh, and the computer and the, and the transceiver, but with the RTS uh, serial signaling that the DigiRig does, it's it's solid. It's really working, and I'm 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 really glad I I bought this thing. So look for more uh, FT8 uh, activations in the future. So uh, thanks a lot, everybody that uh, caught me on FT8 this afternoon. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we'll be doing we'll be doing this again. So look for me on the bands. I'm Michael KB9VBR. Have a great day in 7-3.